Welcome back. Kelvin McKenzie on the latest crisis to hit ITVs this morning very shortly. But first, Boris Johnson has hit out at the party gate witch hunt, which led to his sensational resignation as an MP with immediate effect. In a bombshell statement, the former PM took aim at the Privileges Committee, led by Labour's Boris Hater-in-Chief, Harriet Harman, which looked into whether he lied to MPs over the party gate fuss. He wrote... They have still not produced a shred of evidence that I knowingly or recklessly misled the Commons. Their purpose from the beginning has been to find me guilty regardless of the facts. This is the very definition of a kangaroo court. Boris then hit the nail on the head about the motives behind the deranged hate campaign against him, adding there is a witch hunt underway to take revenge for Brexit and ultimately to reverse the 2016 referendum result. I am now being forced out of Parliament by a tiny handful of people with no evidence to back up their assertions and without the approval even of Conservative Party members, let alone the wider electorate. Now, don't rule out a sensational return to frontline politics for Bojo just yet. But in the meantime, here's a reminder of some of his best moments. I believe that this Thursday can be our country's Independence Day. He's never been to a full no, time. Right, I'm, actually, I started right, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Right, Hang on a second. I, I, what I, I want to do... Take that Boris, back off, boy. Take no. it back. Boris Johnson is elected as the leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. How's that been he's been to Peppa Pig World? Hasta la vista, baby. Thank you. But will he be back? I've got one of Boris's biggest supporters, the former MEP and loyalist David Campbell Bannerman, with the former Cabinet Minister David Maller. Not exactly a major Boris supporter, it is fair to say. Uh, but David, look, I fear... Well, uh, actually, both David. So let me say uh, David Campbell Bannerman first. Uh, I think that Boris has just been subjected to a second anti-democratic coup. But does this not increase his power in the future to potentially lead the Conservative Party again? I, I think you're right, Dan. And, and many, may I just start by saying congratulations on your two-year anniversary and doing so well as a show. Thank you so, so much. Um, <laughs> But no, I do think you're right. Um, Boris is not finished. He was saying that today. He will be back. Uh, and there are other routes. I was looking at um, Zach Goldsmith, uh, who resigned in 2016 uh, because of the third run where he threw. He then stood in the by-election and he lost narrowly to Lib Dems at 2016. But then he was back as a Conservative candidate six months later, and he won that seat uh, then. So there are routes uh, to coming back, and I'd like to see Boris fight a by-election somewhere else, uh, maybe in a stronger seat, and um, it, it we'll all be better off. See, David Mallard, this isn't over. <laughs> Boris isn't finished, is he? Well, I, it may not be over in Boris's mind. But I think what is over, if Boris carries on the way he is, is the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party has got 15, 18 months to try and persuade the public that it is an effective campaigning organisation capable of uniting under a leader who is no longer Boris and will never be Boris again. And what is very sad is that, you know, these three by-elections have been forced upon the government. I mean, Sunak is getting no chance at all to establish himself as a leader. And that's all because, you know, at the end of the day, this is not about the future of the country. It's not about the future of the Conservative Party. It's just about Boris, an essentially primevally selfish man. So David Campbell Bannerman, uh, is there anything fair in what Mr. Mallor has, has just said in terms of the next 18 months, Boris actually maybe has to put his personal ambitions to one side for the good of the Conservative Party? That's his argument. We're not going to win uh, under Sunak. I mean, it's a disaster under Sunak. I mean, even after Partygate, all this mud f uh, thrown at Boris, we're only 2 or 4% behind in the polls. We went down to 30% uh, under Sunak, and we're now 15 16%, and his popularity is collapsing now as well. So, look, we're heading for massive defeat, and I want to preserve the Conservative Party, as David does, um, but the only only way we're going to win the next election is getting Boris back with a new team and new policies around him 
That is conceivable. We've still got time to do it. And remember, Boris actually inherited the mess of May, who, who reduced things to about Sunak's level. Uh, and then he turned it round. Uh, that was 2019, June. And he turned it round in December 2019. So Sunak's had the, more than that in time. And he's, it's a disaster. We're heading for a disaster. Mm. I mean, David Mellor, is there not a fair point in Boris actually being your party's greatest electoral asset? Why on earth would you want him to go quietly? You need him, don't you? You actually need him to win. You need him in the red wall. You need him out campaigning. Well, we don't know whether Boris remains an electoral asset. But look, at the end of the day, it was perfectly possible for Boris Johnson, having done incredibly well in winning that election, to actually settle down, govern the country properly, Instead of saying that getting Brexit done was just, you know, passing some legislation in the House of Commons, he should have got a team of people who could strip out uh, from uh, the British statute book all of the accretions imposed upon us by Europe. But he never did that. He, he, he never wanted to really do the hard yards that would have vindicated uh, his victory. And you know, we ended up with a number 10 uh, garden uh, that was a bit like uh, you know a uh, um, one of those Chicago speakeasies in the 1920s. Oh come I on! I bitterly regret. Come on, am David. Bitterly... That's not fair. So, am I permitted to tell you one thing? Yes. I've probably done what you've never done. I've been in the gardens of Number Ten under a decent Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher, <laughs> and I have with Boris Johnson. It was fair, and indeed, the reason Boris is uh, where he is, is because any number of Conservative members of Parliament thought it was fair. If the Conservative Party, Parliamentary Party, had wanted Boris to remain, he could have remained. Just as if Boris really was serious about staying, he could have said, to hell with you, uh, um, committee, I will, I will see you mm. off. Well, yeah, I, I but isn't, but, but David Campbell Bannerman, isn't that one of the big problems, that. though? Do that. It's not but, interested in that. But, but David Campbell Bannerman, isn't that one of the big problems? The Conservative Parliamentary Party isn't really with the public or with the Conservative membership, and they've never really got on board with the Boris project, and as a result, they've tried to frustrate his time as Prime Minister. Yeah, I mean, the, the big problem behind all of this is that the, the parliament uh, is 60, 40 percent in favour of Remain. And, um, you know, we, we had a Boris government, a, a Brexit government on the Boris. And um, there was always that tension. I would say, I mean, say to David that actually the retained EU law bill, which Jacob Rees-Mogg was tasked with coming up with and did a great job on, you know, we had like 4,000 targeted regulations to get rid of uh, from the EU. But Sunak has now cut that down to 600 under Kem Kemi Badnock. And actually, it's not good enough. You know, he, the, Boris has been trying to do this. He's up against a blob, a Remainer blob in Whitehall and in Parliament, the House of Laws, etc., who don't want to diverge from the EU because they'd love to yeah. rejoin no, the indeed. EU. Indeed. So, David, you're going to continue to support. Oh, we've, we've lost him. We've lost him. But look, uh, thank you very much to David Campbell-Bannerman and David Muller.